start with. But it was to be that we would get the king's heart. I never knew at the time to even think about it. But David Hathaway is a man that God has used around the world, and having meetings, 80,000 the other day in Poland, in, in Israel, they had to turn away something like 1,600 people from the meeting. And he's got invitations to be everywhere. And when we were just talking on the phone, he said, to me, I said I'm just, he asked me what I was going to do in the beginning of the year, so I'm going to be praying. And David said, oh, Dennis, I, I, I'd love to be there. And the humility of this man to come down, he drove down, I don't know, four, maybe five hours to come down and was with us. And I just tell you something, something happened to us this morning. And you see, the Old Testament ends with that verse that says, and the and God would turn the hearts of the children to the parents, or the parents to the children. And uh, if there's ever a time the church needs fathers, need men that can stand up and say, God not only said this, but God has done this, and God will do this. And I believe that God can't crown the whole event that we've had together about no plans. I've never been in all the places I've been, all the countries around. I've never experienced anything like I've experienced over these three days where just God sovereignly run everything. We want to thank God for those ladies, again, who catered and provided the food. It was phenomenal. And just to see them just gliding in and no disturbance and so many people fed. Brother David Hathaway, can you come and just close us Tonight, let's thank God for him as he comes. Can you use a hand up? Well, it was a great privilege to, to come, and when Dennis shared with me what was happening, that men were going to come together here, I said, I want to come. Because you know, there's one thing I've learned. When you're constantly giving out and giving out, there's got to be a time when you receive. And for me, these few days have been a receiving and a ministry to me. And you know, you can't give out what you don't have. And that's so important. And I do have to share with you ladies, I'm sorry. The way I was talking to the men this morning was only because there were no women. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's the fact. It's man to man. I was sharing some of the reality of a day in my life when I experienced in one day the very depths of hell and the heights of heaven. And it changed my life. In fact, I, 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 I said that people are amazed because it all arose out of what was happening in Israel last year with the way that these Jewish people are coming to hear the simplicity of the gospel as they have not done since the day of the apostle Peter. And those are the words of the men out there. And TBN Europe heard about this because the head of TBN was in Israel and found out that all these great American preachers, no, they couldn't do it. And they interviewed me here in England to ask me what happened. And they came to the conclusion after four interviews with me that what changed my life was that experience in the prison. And it did change my life in a very powerful way. I can never be the same again. Just before I bring to you a, a few brief closing thoughts to close the conference, can I just mention, especially for the delegates, I've got a book table over here with two ladies will be there at the end. And if you can take the magazine, they're free. We'd like you, well, they're free for anybody, but particularly the delegates. 
And it's very interesting, it's very interesting to realize that actually this magazine is produced in the Norwegian language. Uh, it's not in every language, it's in Norwegian. And if you register, you can actually have, it's on the internet, but I don't think it's on the internet in Norwegian, but you can actually have a hard copy in Norwegian. And one reason why I mention it is because I've also got my film there, uh, The Rape of Europe, and the book Babylon in Europe. And the next, if you register at the desk, the next issue of the magazine is the latest update on the situation in Europe. Uh, and it's so red hot, I only finished it three days ago, the article uh, for publication. So do go to the book table. But I, I just feel that somehow I, I, want to, I want to bring a conclusion into this conference. But in doing so, it's not easy because we want to sense the heart of the king. And I, I, I think the, the most important thing to me is when our heart is the same as his. And I'm reminded of King David of old. When his passion towards the end of his life was that in order to glorify God, he said, I live in a house. No, they didn't live in caves. He said, I live in a house. But the house of my God is still just a tent, such as we had in the wilderness. And it's my desire to honor God and to glorify him, to build this temple. And the interesting thing is he was saying to the prophet Nathan, do I do it? And he was asking the question, should I, should I do it? And Nathan was saying, do what's in your heart. And you know, so often that, brethren, is the key. It's what's in your heart. Because it's God's heart. If you live with him, if you walk with him, if you talk with him, it's in your heart. You know, one of the greatest lessons I, I was to learn in spiritual experience is this. I, I don't always have to ask God, what do I do? A lot of people come to me and they say, look, D David, I want to know God's will. I, I want to know, what do I do? I spend a lot of time saying, Lord, what must I do? But you know, what I've discovered with this, if you have a, a strong relationship between husband and wife, the wife doesn't always have to ask the husband, what do you want? She knows. It's in her heart. And it's the same with the husband. He doesn't always have to say to his wife, what do you want? He knows what's in her heart. And if we have that relationship with God, we know what's in his heart. And that's why when David went to Nathan the prophet and, and was saying, do I do this? Nathan is saying, you are so close to God. Your relationship with him is so, so precious. If it's in your heart, it's also in God's heart. Do it. I remember when God was revealing to me the, 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 the way in which he was going to open the Iron Curtain. You have to understand, I've been working behind the Iron Curtain for something like 50 years. And I, I remember when God put in my heart to, to go to Siberia for three months and to take 400 people. No money. <laughs> I couldn't pay, but God said take 400. And I, was, I took 400 people for three months to Siberia. We traveled all over Siberia in, in the days of absolute utter chaos when the first freedom was coming and there was no communication, no telephones, no computers. You, 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 you couldn't book a return ticket to anywhere. And 
people before I went, I, I explained that this is 20 years ago. I said, it's going to cost two million pounds. They said, how much do you have? I said, I don't have 200 pennies. And the people were questioning and actually came and into my office. My so-called spiritual advisors came into my office and they sat down with me and they said, David, explain why you're going to do this. It's crazy. You need to wait two years to get the money together. You have to wait and wait. And I said, no, it's in my heart. I have to do it now. And the more they questioned, the more I said, it's in my heart. I have to do it now. And in fact, you, nobody realizes this, but the, they said you can't go and preach every day for three months. You can't do it. You can't do it. They're always telling me that. <laughs> and they actually, somebody, one of my spiritual advisors, paid for somebody else to go with me so that when I failed, somebody else would take over. You don't, you don't realize how hard it is. And at one stage, they were even counting, all right, he's failed on this and he's going to fail on this and, and they were predicting how long before I failed and... But of course I couldn't fail because it was in God's heart and it was in my heart. And the amazing thing was that two years later it was impossible to do it. When we did it, it was the only time when you could ever do it. And what happened was to spark off the revival which has spread and it's because of what happened there that everything has opened up, Israel has opened up, everywhere I go has opened up because I did what was in God's heart. And that's why I, I'm always reminded of David. Nathan said, if it's in your heart, do it. But oh, that we could live so close to God that your heart is the same as his heart and his heart is the same as yours, but you have to live so close to him. You need to live in fellowship with him. You need to know him. I think it's very interesting that there is one thing in my heart that I should share with you. If there's one thing to share as we bring this conference, this not conference, this fellowship to a conclusion, there's something, and I was just sitting there and I'm saying, Lord, what do I say? <laughs> and I, I want to just share this, that something that's in my heart is God's vision for Europe. Because, you see, I have a vision. And everyone who works for God must have a vision. You must have a vision. Without a vision, the Bible says, the people will die. Proverbs, is it 29 verse 18? Where there is no vision, the people die. And if there is no vision in your heart, your ministry will die. And I say that, I say that so sincerely, but believe me, that's what God wants me to tell you. If there is no vision in your heart, your ministry will die. I, I have seen so many who have lost their ministry. And it's a tragedy. You know, I, I had to go to, to work to get the money to pay to go through Bible school. And for 18 months, I worked in the city of London here. I worked in Barclay Square and Threadneedle Street in a, in a bank. And you know, I was in agony because I knew that the Lord was coming and I knew that the world was going to hell. And my job was to save the world from hell. That hell that I talked to men about this morning. 
And the thing was, I was in agony because I'm saying, oh God, oh God, they won't let me in the Bible school. I, 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 I've got to work here for 18 months to get the money to go in the Bible college. Oh God, don't give my job to somebody else. And it was in an agony. And I was praying in, in that bank. I was in an agony. Oh God, I, it's going to take 18 months. You're so desperate to get the job done. And somebody else better than me will get the job. Please God, it's in my heart to do this for you. Do you understand? And God saved the job for me. And when people say to me, oh, David, your age, you're going to retire. There's one church I won't go to anymore because every time I go there, they say, when are you going to retire? <laughs> and I said, you've got it spelt wrong. It's not retire, it's refire. <laughs> But why? Why? Because I'm still saying to God. People, they ask me, my, my trustees ask me in the board meeting, they say, David, have you prepared a successor? No, because I will not give my job to somebody else. <laughs> so don't think you're going to have my job. <laughs> no, I will not give my job to somebody else. It's in my heart. And it's in God's heart. Some people wonder why uh, I call my ministry Eurovision. <laughs> well, it's nothing to do with the song contest because the English can't win it. <laughs> I'll tell you where it came from. When God had given me the vision that the Iron Curtain would break and I was holding those big conferences in Germany when we would get up to 5,000 people coming from East and West and breaking the Iron Curtain. And the theme of the conference was Eurovision. And if you remember John Osteen in America, whose son now, Joel, has the largest church in America, and Joel, as a boy, used to travel behind the Iron Curtain with me. I know him so well. And uh, John Osteen was the speaker at the first of my conferences. And we were sitting outside the conference center. And his wife, Dodie, just pointed to the sign and said, You're a vision. She said, David, it's your vision. But what is it? It's a vision of what God can do in Europe. God burned in my heart. In my heart, he burned a vision of what he wants to do in Europe. And then I found out that other famous uh, British missionary, Hudson Taylor, you know Hudson Taylor of China, the China Inland Mission? And in 1889, he was back in England on, as we say, furlough from, from the mission field to raise money and to take more people out to China for the work. And he was speaking in a church like yours and suddenly he stopped and in the middle of his talk about China, God gave him a vision of Europe. And the vision was this. 1889, he saw in the vision the rise of communism and the fall. He saw the two world wars, the 1418 war and the 3945 war. And he said the two wars virtually grow into one. And then he said in the last days, the last great revival he saw in his vision began in Russia. And from Russia spread into Europe, and then the Lord returned. And he shared this vision. And you know, that vision burns in my soul. And I didn't know when I was going to Russia 40, 50 years ago that the great revival would begin in Russia. But it did begin in Russia. I tell you, God has fulfilled that. 
And today, the greatest work that I do in evangelism, everywhere I go, it's Russian people. When I go to Israel, it's the Russian Jews who come. I've just been to America meeting Russian Jews in America. Oh, they said, David, there's a million Russian Jews in New York. You must come. We want to take the Madison Square Garden, 40,000 in New York. You see, God said the revival would begin in Russia. And the most amazing thing, as I was sharing with the men, you know what I've learned? God always does what he says. There is not a man in the world can ever say God has failed. If you know that, that's why I love that song, thank you for singing, let the church say amen. Because God has spoken. And you know this would answer every theological question. It would solve the problems in the Church of England and the government over the questions of things like homosexuality. And I understood from Lord Taylor that yesterday they're accepting homosexual bishops in the Anglican Church. Yesterday. But that's not what God says. And the church has to hear what God says and say amen. Amen. The church must not contradict God, nor change God, nor change God's vision, nor God's voice. Let the church say, Amen. God has spoken. And over the church, God has spoken. Over the priesthood, God has spoken. Over you, God has spoken. Over me, God has spoken. And God never fails. I said yesterday, or was it this morning, I think yes, yesterday, I was saying that when I want to hear from God, I go to the Word. I pray and I ask God. Then I go to the Word. I say, Lord, I, I, I'm human. I want to see it in writing. But you know, I want to tell you what this book is. This is a contract between God and man. It's a legal contract. God cannot break it. And it's not only a legal contract, it's signed and sealed with blood. And I want to declare, God has spoken. And you, church, must say amen. amen. And if the church today would get the message, God has already spoken. You don't need to wait. God has spoken. God has declared. And when God has declared, God will do it. When God showed me the day that I would come out of prison, God did it. When God said he would heal me of throat cancer, he did it. When God said he'd heal my lung cancer, he did it. When God said if I went to Russia, he'd pour out the Spirit, he did it. When I went to Israel, God said, I'll pour out my spirit. He did it. When I prayed over the Catholics and said, oh God, give me favor with the Catholics. And I was weeping on the top of the highest mountain in Germany. 10,000 feet up. I'm going back there in a couple of weeks. Because I have something else to pray about. And I was weeping over the Catholics. Oh God, the Catholics are going to hell because Catholics don't teach Christ. And I said, give me favor. God gave me favor and 80,000 came to repent. 80,000. I don't want to tell you, but God has given me favor. And if it goes the way that I believe it's in God's heart, they said in three years, no, in two years from now, I will be preaching to one and a half million Catholics a day. No, it's something you don't even understand. I dare not even tell you, but that's what they're saying. If God has spoken, I must say amen. And if you believe God has spoken, whether you're church, 
or pastors. If you know God has spoken. Amen. Don't question. It isn't faith. It's fact. Look, I want to tell you this is fact. This is power. This is the answer. God has spoken. All you've got to do is say, Amen, Lord. Amen. If it's in your heart, it's in my heart. If it's in my heart, you put it there. And I'll tell you, everything I'm doing, why? God put it in my heart. Look, I know him. Don't you know him? Don't you know him? Don't you know him? Didn't God put something in your heart? Let me ask you that question. Close this with a question. What's God put in your heart? Do it. Just do it. Don't tell me it's impossible. Don't tell me it's impossible. My God is the God of the impossible. Do you serve the same God that I do? Do you love the same God that I do? Do you believe the God of the Word, the God of the Bible? Come on, church, say amen. amen. <laughs> what else can I say? <laughs> amen. <laughs> what else? There's nothing else to say. You know, why are we doing so much in, in Israel? Because God put it in the heart of one Russian Jew that no Russian Jew would go to hell without hearing about Jesus. He didn't know how to do it, but he didn't know God had put it also in my heart, and he called me to go. And I found a man that had got the heart of God and I had the same heart that he did and God is doing it. I'm back there in a few weeks. I can't say no. Oh, if only we understood. Dennis, thank you for these meetings. It's changing me. But I want it to change you. And you said, just tell them what's the heart of the king. Well, it's the same as what's in my heart. I want it to be the same with you. I want you to have the same heart that he has. And come on, church. Let's all stand and say amen. amen. Let's say amen to God. Amen. Oh, Father, I pray that these days will change our hearts. Oh God, as even I was saying this morning, Lord, melt our hearts, soften our hearts so that we can hear and know and share emotion with you. Make us emotional. Let us not be ashamed of emotion. Oh God, let us not be afraid. Take the fear out of our hearts. And Lord, let us just lift up the book and say, God has spoken. Amen to every word. Amen to every promise. Amen to the power. Amen to the glory. Amen to the fire. Amen to the revival. Amen. Oh God, amen, amen, amen. Let the church say amen. Come on, lift up your hand. Oh God, give me God's heart. Come on, say it. Oh God, give me God's heart. Oh God, put that word in my heart so that I will know that I love what God loves, that God loves what I love. Oh God, bring us close together until we come to the place where we don't even need to ask. Because it's in our hearts. Oh God, I say, Amen. Amen. Oh God, I say, You have spoken. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's give Him the glory. Amen. <laughs>
Praise God. Hallelujah. And the word of God says, and he will grant you the desires of your heart. We are going into 2013 knowing that without even saying it, just because our hearts knit with a king's heart, he will grant the desires of our heart. Tomorrow morning is the first Sunday in 2013. We'll be here. I know there'll be many more people here. Let's just raise our hands right now and say, Father, as I come before you, you want to take me through this year having your desires in my heart and seeing them fulfilled. No weapon that's formed against me will prosper because Lord you cannot be conquered therefore I am an overcomer because Lord greater is he that is within me than he that's in the world say amen, amen. greet each other see you in the morning God bless you don't forget to go and get your don't forget to get your DVD those